Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so um, I'll speak about satellite communication. Now, satellite communication is very expensive today, mainly because satellites are expensive. It can cost uh, up to $60 million to launch a single satellite to geostationary orbit. So um, in order to make satellites more cost effective, you'd like them to be very small and maybe divide them between launches uh, to lower the risk. But then when a satellite is in space, you'd like it to be as large as possible because then it can become powerful to supply a lot of communication. So how do you solve these two contradicting requirements? Um, so we thought, why not grow satellites in space? We launch them small, and then when they are in space, let them grow. Space is unlimited, almost. So this is how it looks like. This is a regular launch. We actually are hitchhiking on this launcher. So there's a large satellite who pays for the most of the cost of the launch. And you'll see it shortly when the canopy opens. So this is the last stage of the launcher. The canopy opens and there is a large satellite, which is actually not ours. It pays for most of the launch cost. And when it goes out, our satellites reside in these canopies. So uh, when they open, our satellites go out. They're very small, the size of a shoebox. And when they reach their designated orbit, they start to open. First, they open the solar panels in order to harvest energy. And then a large antenna unfolds from the satellite, enabling it to act like it was 100 times bigger. So a satellite that can um, communicate with Earth um, with a throughput of about uh, 1 megabit per second to 10 megabits per second can go up to 3 gigabit per second with our technology. So 60 of our uh, satellites can create a constellation that provides communication to any point of the globe. Moreover, we're able to control the footprint to optimize the way that we communicate with Earth. So we can provide better communication and at a lower cost because the life cycle cost of the satellite is much lower. So this is it, simple. Now, how do we make this uh, CGI graphics real? So what I'm going to show you are some steps of the development, which yielded two satellites. One of them is going to be launched in the uh, beginning of 2019. Um, we are four founders, uh, basically from most of the units that were presented before. We have uh, hundreds of years of mutual experience in, in, in the fields of aerospace and satellite communication. And what you can see here is the antenna as it is folded like a parachute into a, a unit that is the size of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. It's called a 1U. It's called a nanosatellite. And this antenna actually, when it unfolds, it simply jumps to a configuration that looks like this. This is a 60 centimeter antenna that used to need a satellite that weighs about 100 to 150 kilograms to carry. Now it is carried on board a satellite that weighs less than 10 kilograms. This is the uh, challenge that we bring to space. So um, one of the problems is that this antenna is very flexible. So under 1G on Earth, it actually changes, takes a different shape. We want to make sure that this antenna actually will perform in space. So what we did three weeks ago, we took two of these antennas, put them into an airplane who performed a zero-G flight. So actually, it goes up, and then it drops for 20 seconds. So during this drop, the antenna experiences zero-G, like it will be in space. This is uh, some raw footage from the uh, actual flight. So now the airplane uh, goes up. You see that the uh, antenna here is a little bit bent. It's not uh, as symmetrical as it should be. And soon you'll see the airplane, you'll hear it actually. It starts to drop. This is where it's a zero G. And we open a second antenna. These two antennas now are being measured photogrammetically in order to uh, measure the exact shape. 
So after this flight, we know that we have the perfect antennas, and these antennas are actually going to fly in space uh, in less than four months. So this enabled us to have this very happy uh, picture, which is actually a box. Eventually, everything goes into a box. This box yesterday arrived at our integrator in Scotland, where it is currently being built into the satellite and will be launched to space shortly. Now, um, what are our plans? Uh, basically, we have two basic markets that we are serving. Um, this satellite, which has two antennas, will be a part of a constellation that will supply high throughput communication to any place between plan, uh, plus to minus 20 degrees latitude. And it will actually look looks something like this. So this is similar to the video you saw, but in this case, the satellites are creating a constellation which is equatorial. This constellation will consist of 26 satellites that will provide high throughput communication, so up to three gigabit per second at a cost that is less than a quarter of uh, what's possible today because of the low life cycle cost of the satellite and the high throughput of the antenna. And in order to create this, we create the, the, the whole ecosystem consisting of uh, the satellite itself, the gateway, which will enable communication. So this gateway contains two antennas that uh, one of them is always connected to a satellite. And then from the satellite, you can broadcast down to Earth or to anything that's below the satellite. So you can provide IFC, in-flight connectivity, or you can communicate with boats, or basically anything that's, uh, again, below the satellite. So this is one scenario. The second scenario is providing IoT. Since we have a very large antenna in space, we're able to communicate with sensors that are this size. So these small sensors can be spread uh, in fields, uh, at cities, and serve as solutions for smart city or smart uh, agriculture. And these are the two venues that we are currently approaching. We have a lot of uh, partners. Some of them are in this room. We've been invested uh, by Arcrowd, by El Al, by JVP. And uh, we hope uh, some of you will join us. Thanks a lot. Thank you.